So what I want to do now is to talk about the last thing that we are going to have on the test, and this is basically the benchmark construction. Okay. So we said in a class, right? So we actually said that we have the Barclays breakdown, okay? So basically, for, for example, if we have bonds here, right? Then you have all these, uh, all these uh, sectors. You have the government sector, you know, you have the uh, agency sector, and then you have the, <coughs> the corporates, etc., etc., etc. Okay. So now the question is, okay, what do you do with it? Okay, so one thing that we said that we are going to basically use these things, right, in order to, uh, in order to basically make investment decisions. Another one, another thing that is actually utilized with this, with this thingy, right, is basically the benchmark construction or index construction. And what you do, you basically group bonds together according to searching criteria, right? So what are those criteria? Right? So the first thing, the first criteria is the most important one is size. And this is basically liquidity. And different shops, right, utilize it a little bit differently. For example, Barclays or MSCI now, you know, uses uh, basically all the bonds, the indexes, includes all the bonds which have uh, $1 billion outstanding. And Merrill, or Bank of America, right, has uh, 250 million outstanding. So if you have an issue in the market, if you have a new issue of the market, right, and the uh, and principal outstanding on this issue is, let's say, $1 billion, it will go to the Barclays family of indices. It will go, you know, it will be part of the Barclays family of indices. If it's going to be, you know, um, more than 250 million, it will go to the Merrill Lynch Bank of America family of indices. Or, right, if it's below 250 million, it will not go to any of those buckets. The second one, okay, so this is liquidity. Why is liquidity? Because if you have big, big, uh, big issues, right, it is much easier to trade them, right? The second thing is the maturity bands, our maturity bands. Okay. So maturity bands is basically, okay, if you have a bond or if you have a maturity sector, right, you divide it into smaller pieces. So for example, five to seven, or three to five, or you know, or one to three, or whatever. So if you have an index, for example, right? Let's say the index is Barclays index one to three, right? All the bonds which mature in the range between one to three years, right, will go into this index, okay? The third one is of course a sector, okay? And the sector is exactly what I was talking about, right? So you have to have a very well-defined, you know, very well-defined sector breakdown in order to get this. And, you know, the, 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 the greatness of Barclays, right, and the greatness of the index uh, providers, that they were actually able to come up with a very concise and compact, you know, sector breakdown that actually appealed to many market participants, right? So, for example, for corporate, right, it may be that you have a sector a utility, you know, financial, and we said also industrial, right? So then an index, an index or sub-index, right, which will be basically constructed from the family, right, will, for example, can contain all the industrial, all the industrial bonds, right? So there is a bond which is issued, let's say that it's verifies the size of liquidity, let's say that it's actually inside the maturity bands, let's say more than, you know, the index includes more than one year, right? And then if it's industrial, it will go to the industrial bucket. If it's in financial, it will go to the financial bucket. And if it's utility, it will go to the utility bucket, okay? And the fourth one and the last one, right, is rating, right? And we said, we said, right, that the ratings are basically either, you know, the, the crude up is either investment rate or high yield, right? And then you have the sub rating, triple A, yada, yada, double A, yada, 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 all these gates, right? All these guys, sorry, not these guys. Okay. And high yield the same, right? So, uh, you know, 
So it means once again, right, that you just need to look on buckets, right? So for example, if you want to define a certain rating bucket, you can say, okay, I look on bonds, okay, and I look on all the bonds which have a high yield rating. So now you don't care about maturity, you don't care about sector, you don't care about anything, right? So the beauty of this is that you have four guys, you have four big, you know, master buckets, and then in these master buckets you can play, right? This is like a beautiful Lego, right? You can play, you can de design anything that you want, you know? And, and, and I'm telling you that you have a lot of fun doing that. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun to design those indices, you know, to customize those indices to your needs. Beautiful, you know, beautiful job. And if anybody of you will get it, I mean, you, you, I think you'll enjoy it, okay? It's called benchmark engineering. All right, so once you have these buckets, you then start to construct benchmarks, which, which you manage again, which, which your portfolio you manage against. But this is going to be a different, you know, different video. I do not want to, to, to tell you now how to, you know, how to do, how to manage investments. For now, just, you know, this benchmark construction, okay? So that was the risk to it, that was today, and have a great weekend, and I'll uh, see you on Monday. And good luck on the test, of course, okay? So take care, guys.